So in a previous video, I used this casting node without explaining too well what it actually does and how it works. And it is a very important thing to understand. So we're going to make a quick standalone video on this. And a casting node does two very important things. Number one, it lets you check whether or not a actor that you have in your code is of a certain specific type. We've talked about actor types before, that being actors, pawns, characters, and all of the derivatives that you can make of it yourself, all the children that you can make. And right here we are in my BP coin, which is the blueprint for my coin. And when we overlap with something, that simply gives me a actor reference. The only thing that this knows is all of the information that is in the base actor class. So that is things like the get actor location we can use with this because a base actor is all we need for that. But we need some specific more information than that because we need information that is not stored in the actor class. Instead, we need information that is stored in the BP third person character class inside of our blueprint for our character that we have here because here we have an integer for coins so how do we get this generic actor to transform into a reference to specifically the bp third person character and that is what a casting node does a casting node takes in an actor it checks is this actor of a certain type and if it is you can use it to create a new reference to specifically that type of actor allowing you to then use and get access to the information that is specific to that type of actor. In this case, the variable for coins. You don't even always need to use it to get access to information inside of an actor though. You can also very easily use this to check whether or not a certain actor is of a certain type. Because we have two execution pins here. The top one will execute whenever our cast is successful. So whenever the input matches the type that we're looking for but if we put anything else into this the cast will fail and we actually have a separate execution pin for that so we can uh print a string and we can say uh failed to cast we can print that out right and if you've been following along with the previous tutorial uh, and you're confused as to what might be different for you i have set the uh, object type for the coin back to world dynamic and everything uh to overlapping so that this overlap event will be generated by something that is not our third person character. If you don't know what the hell I'm talking about there because you didn't see the last video, don't worry about it. Because now, when I run into these things, I can still pick up the coins. But when this sweeper runs over one of them, we will see that it will have failed to cast. Because it's trying to cast this BP sweeper into a BP third person character, which is entirely a different kind of blueprint. So that's not gonna work. There, however, is one exception to that. And that is if I'm trying to cast to the parent of whatever this object is. So that sounds really confusing, right? Let me explain. We've talked about the actor hierarchy before, very early on in the series, where we explained that a actor has a child called a pawn and that pawn has a child called a character we made a child of that character and that is what bp third person character is so when i try to use my reference to what i know is a bp third person character the engine at this point and this note still doesn't know that until after we've cast it i can cast this to any actor that is also a parent of the BP third person character in this case. So if I wanted to instead cast to character, I could do that and that cast would succeed. If I wanted to simply cast to the pawn, I could also do that and this cast would also succeed, even though at first glance it might look like, but this is a BP third person character. It's not a character or a pawn. So why does that cast succeed? And that is because it actually is a character, and it actually is a pawn. And that is because this casting works on anything above what we're specifically looking for in the hierarchy as well. And we can make some sense of that, right? Because the reason we want to cast is to create access to information in a certain blueprint. All the information for a character 
is also already accessible in my BP third person character, such as the capsule component and the arrow component and the mesh component and the camera boom component and the follow camera and the character movement component. All those things we have in my BP third person character because they are in its parent class, in the character. And in the same way, the character and by extension my BP third person character have something called an AI controller or a player controller. And they have that because those are established in the pawn blueprint. So when I cast this actor to the pawn, I will get a reference to it as if it was just a pawn, nothing more. So at this point, I can't get the coins variable out of it anymore because the engine doesn't know that this pawn is also a BP third person character. Why would you want to do that though? Uh, that is because in general terms, it is better and more performative to only cast to specifically what you need. If I only needed the capsule component out of my BP third person character, it's better to cast to just the character than to also cast to the thing that has a bunch more information accessible as well. It's not a very big difference, and by and large, if this part confuses you, I would entirely just ignore that optimization, because it's not that important. So we could, if we want to share that off a little bit better, chain these things together. So really what we're doing in this chain is we are taking a generic actor, and then we're upgrading the reference to it to a pawn, and then we're upgrading it to a character and then we are upgrading it to a third person character. It's just that before what we did is we took out those two steps because the engine can do that math for itself and immediately go from actor to third person character. I remember when I first got started in Unreal, this whole casting business really took quite a while to wrap my head around. So if you still are not 100% on anything that I've just said, that is entirely understandable. With time, practice and experience, you will run into issues, misunderstanding it, doing it wrong, and eventually you will start learning it a little bit better. And you can always at later points come back to this video and listen to this explanation again, maybe when you have a little bit more wider knowledge about the engine, and maybe at that point it'll click a little bit better. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page.